Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another session with Michael and I on this new topic of Mr. Bruce Lee, martial arts. Uh, and uh, according to what Michael has told us already, a uh, film producer and uh, would be film producer, I suppose, because he really didn't produce much, did he, Michael? Welcome, Michael. Yeah, welcome, Brad. Hello, dear listeners. Uh, I suspect that we will throw off a bunch of uh, real diehard fans because our approach is uh, much different from the usual approach. Uh, people just uh, are determined to look upon uh, the uh, physical capabilities of uh, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan and all, all these people. But uh, I'm really facing forward the, the thing that uh, almost no one goes uh, behind the industry. And uh, so this uh, Bruce Lee or Lee Jun Fan, his Chinese name, is just a prime example because I think it covers much uh, of uh, interesting uh, facts which are not generally known by the general public because he was a senior American actor, so that he was born in San Francisco, but he was raised in Hong Kong. Later, at the age of 18, he went back to the United States also to claim his uh, United States citizenship, uh, among other things. Uh, as I told you last time, I have read many, many books on the subject. And of course, I will forget this fact and that fact sometimes, but I, I'm eager to go uh, behind the um, the martial arts legend and look real for the uh, for things uh, who usually documentations will not uh, consider the things important, but I consider it more important than to have some. Uh, uh, discussions of uh, which move is the best and if he would be the fastest and all the stuff. Mainly, Bruce Lee is an actor that does not take anything away from his abilities in the martial arts. That does not take anything away from his ability as a so-called philosopher. That does not take anything away from his ability as a human being. But you have to realize that he was born into a family of actors because his father on the right, yeah, he was an actor in the Chinese opera. That's why he was born in San Francisco, because at that time, 1940 in November, his father has an engagement in the Chinatowns so in the Chinese section of San Francisco. So that's the reason why Bruce Lee had been born in San Francisco, United States and not in Hong Kong or anywhere else. It was just that his wife agreed on uh, going to San Francisco as well. And that's where he was born in San Francisco on the 27th of, this, of uh, November, sorry, 1940. In this episode, we will not go into Bruce Lee very deep. That will come later. Because first of all, we have to have some general knowledge of the things to come. I think, which are not generally known. And that's really a problem. You don't uh, learn it in the history lessons. You don't learn it in a martial arts school. You don't learn it everywhere. You have to educate yourself. Don't depend on the state or any school or any university and any teacher to educate you. I realize and I'm way more than 50 years old that I have to educate myself first and foremost because Brett and I, we are Bible believing Christians on the Bible. And secondly, we have to look for the real history behind it so that we really can sort out what's the fake news and what's the real news and what's the reality behind it. And that's not an easy feat, uh, Brett, isn't it? Mm, you know, it's a very painful one, too. And I think, you know, uh, it all depends on how you look at it, I guess, huh? So, uh, yeah, Michael, um, looking forward to learning more about this entire realm of uh, your research. It has, of course, to do with uh, not only with Bruce Lee, but Bruce Lee as the prime example. It has to do with uh, the role of China in the world. It has to do with the American industry. It has to do with real history. And so, therefore, it, it would be maybe the best to pretend that you are just do not know anything so that you're absolutely fresh. You have erased your hardest drive 
as uh, Master Ken would tell you, you have to erase your hard disk drive, and uh, I'm not uh, in. Yeah, not, Michael, uh, it's uh, reformatting, like reformatting. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. You do not know. There's a quite hilarious uh, real martial artist out there, who's called Master Ken. And uh, Master Ken is uh, is making a spoof of everything, and he makes hilarious comedy. And he has created um, a fantasy system called Ameridote, um, which is of course surpassing every other style in martial arts. And he knows 100 ways to defend against knives and 200 hits per second and all that stuff. I showed it to you last or second to last time. And um, that's why I say it's it's unbelievable. But to really to find out the truth is extremely hard in this world where you've been bombarded with the tons of useless information. And I hope that we can provide in this episode a general look on martial arts. So let me now welcome you officially to that uh, second session on Bruce Lee. Here we go. So that is his artist, Cantonese opera father, Li Hoi Chung with his wife and uh, the small, I do not call it baby because baby, in my humble opinion, Brett is an abbreviation of Babylon. I call it the little child, Bruce Lee. Um, he had been born in uh, November 1940 in San Francisco. And after that engagement, after um, they have uh, made uh, several events there in, in Chinatown, um, the family decided to move back to Hong Kong when Bruce Lee had been three months old. So that means in February 1941, they were moving back to Hong Kong in the middle of the Second World War, of course. But that will be an issue quite later on. Let me go to the script for this. Session. Well, I found that interesting, Michael. Some time ago, you had mentioned that Hong Kong was not a part of China. Mm -hmm. And I forget what year. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the Britain, uh, British uh, Empire has um, had a contract that they could uh, occupy and manage Hong Kong until 1997. I never knew that. That's news to me. I thought that was a very interesting fact. Yeah, you see that the British Empire has uh, occupied and managed Hong Kong until 1997. And that had been established as a colony of the British Empire from 1841-42. So for more than 150 years, it belonged to the United Kingdom. Yeah, and so it was a capitalist country. Let's uh, put it this way. And uh, after 1997, uh, you see that uh, many so-called liberties uh, are gone and a uh, little bit more of uh, influence from mainland China is uh, going on. And uh, so, yeah, the Hong Kong citizen, they are not uh, very delighted that uh, China has uh, taken over so far. Hmm. But that's it, actually. The whole territory has been transferred to China in 1997. And now it's called uh, a special administrative region, together with Macau, belongs to China. So much so. so what about Bruce Lee and what about uh, martial arts in general? You see, the Internet is full of BS. Don't expect me to go into every nitty gritty. We will do that maybe later when we are focusing on the man Bruce Lee, but not at the moment. It's, uh, it's unbelievable how many false information is out there. This is Sadhguru, somebody who at the World Economic Forum tells you that uh, he says there are too many souls on this planet. Hmm? So these are all in the satanic media to depopulize the earth. Yeah, and he's speaking about that uh, Bruce Lee had some abilities uh, using uh, money, Puraka and uh, all that stuff. You see that this man is a fraud. He is absolutely a fraud. Yeah, we will go into many, many items, but now we have to go on a quite average route. First of all, the things that have been presented by us on the media aren't naturally the things that we are supposed to see, and it is not the reality. It is through the lens of the camera or through the pen of the writer. That meaning that for almost 200 years now, the media has been controlled. We can prove that 
with a claim of a former New York uh, magazine. That's him, John Swinton, a Scottish-American journalist, newspaper publisher, orator. He served as a chief editorial writer of the New York Times, and he said that uh, journalists are intellectual prostitutes. Yeah. Our time, our talents, our lives, our possibilities, all are the property of other men. There is no such thing in America as an independent press. Yeah, and you can also add to that, Brad, there is no thing in America as an independent uh, movie. <sighs> Movies. Oh, most certainly, yeah. Yeah. Movie making, yeah. So they show us what they want us to see and to believe. And sometimes it's the other way around. You see that this impression here on the camera screen is quite the opposite to the real event. Yeah, where this is the victim running away from the murderer. And uh, here is it's the other way around. I, I, I really like that picture because it shows you that um, the cameraman actually is a dictator or the photographer is a dictator. The editor is a dictator because they are dictating what you are about to see, learn and believe. So the issue with Bruce Lee is that he will ever be remembered as a young, vital guy. No one will remember Blues as an old man in a cane, but just as the young man who was martial arts best, like James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, etc., 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 etc. Amy Winehouse, name everybody who has deceased at a quite young age. And so, the image of Bruce Lee will be forever young, forever white, and forever the best, unbeatable. But where does it all come from? Yeah, you see, Bruce Lee has paved the way for so many other martial artists of for an entire genre. Yeah, for the martial arts film, or generally speaking, Brad, the Eastern. Yeah, usually we know about the Western. Yeah, that was John Wayne, for example. Yeah, all these uh, characters, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, all these actors, they brought us Western or Clint Eastwood on that regard. Yeah, but then at the beginning of the 1970s, there was the Eastern. So east of the world, Asia has then been more open to the public and they produced movies who are then about to be seen in Western uh, cinemas. So that's it. That's it. That's a big. So there was a big, a big uh, movie industry uh, evolving in uh, Asia, and uh, it's all about big money, of course. So all the names I have listed here would not be known if there would be not the forerunner or the the father of uh, martial arts in a movie, um, Bruce Lee. You would never encounter Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris would be just a point karate fighter. Jet Li would be just one of uh, of a famous uh, Chinese guy, but not worldwide fame and would never have starred in Lethal Weapon. Jackie Chan would not be the number one Asian star that he was for several decades. And Cynthia Rothrock would, I think, never stand a chance to perform in movies. So all these people who are then action stars and uh, we are busy with martial arts and you can add so many people to the name or to the list, yeah, make it Michael J. White, name anybody to that list, Steven Seagal, <sighs> Jeff Speakman, name anybody. Yeah, they're all in the footsteps of Bruce Lee because he was the, the first one who made really the martial arts public. There were quite some Japanese films before. So the uh, the second Samurai, I think it was, and Godzilla and, and all these monster movies and uh, Samurai movies, but uh, not a particular uh, martial arts movie. That was uh, at the hype of the 1970s, the Kung Fu craze, when there was a certain singer called Carl Douglas. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. These kids were fast as lightning. That was a number one hit even. Yeah, So that was a really crazy thing going on and therefore you can assume that it had all, all previously been carefully planned. Everything has been planned beforehand that we will come to, I think, in one of the next sessions. The summer of love has been planned and the hillbillies and the, the London scene, everything has been planned before. 
and not by politicians, but by the people behind the politicians. So what is this about? This is about to give a general image about that the press and the media, which has been controlled, is using until this very day Bruce Lee as an icon, as a role model for Asian males. Usually, Asian males had been portrayed, portrayed up to then as weak, small, unimportant, just servants, like um, Charlie Chan's favorite son, the movie series, yeah? And um, the cook in Ponderosa, Bonanza, yeah, it's a Chinese cook. Yeah, so and and in uh, even in uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, they used um, a Western actor to portray in, in, in a Chinese guy. Yeah, and uh, also in the series uh, Kung Fu with uh, or Kane with uh, where supposedly a Chinese monk is coming to the Western and uh, without uh, fighting without any weapons with much philosophy, uh, that role took uh, David Carradine, and we will talk about David Carradine in the future. And uh, he was just a Western actor without any uh, Kung Fu background so far. Yeah, some basic things, but not, uh, not by much. And so the industry was not ready to portray a Chinese superstars in 1960. That's also the reason why Bruce Lee went to Hong Kong after he got an offer by Raymond Chow. But I said this episode is about the idolism and this episode will be about martial arts. So let's get it on. You see here a big portrait, a big statue of Bruce Lee in the harbor of, uh, I think it is uh, the, the statue here in Hong Kong. Yeah, you see this is uh, an image, an idol, because it is larger than life or larger than Bruce Lee, who was uh, five, uh, seven and a half, I think he was, weighing uh, 140 pounds. So he has been uh, put on a throne, yeah, on a pedestal here, Brett. And this is the harbor of uh, Hong Kong, if I remember correctly, that has not been paid by uh, the city of Hong Kong, but uh, on private funds. But that's not important. Important is that the people are admiring Bruce Lee for his uh, physical abilities, for his knowledge of martial arts. And he has been seen as the father of martial arts, although there were people before him who were mixing everything up to just win fights, but uh, he made it on a big scale, so he brought it on a big screen. And so that uh, people are being admiring Bruce Lee for being the maybe the most famous Asian character of all times. I think he's uh, far more famous than even Jackie Chan. OK. The Bible tells us Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Yeah, because we have to worship God because God has w created man. Yeah, so why worship a man when he was created by God in the image of God? The problem is that uh, many Chinese, especially Hong Kong people, and uh, also the family of Bruce Lee, they don't believe in God, but they believe in enlightenment. Uh, they just uh, believe in Taoism, Taoism, in the Buddhist notion that everything is in everything, and uh, they have been reportedly been very superstitious. That will be also an issue later on. So you see that he has been seen as a superhuman, yeah, almost unreal. When you see from the footage from the intro that he was able to do one inch punches, although I think it's more like, it's like a push. And he has been able to do two finger push ups. Uh, he was in an unbelievable shape, but that was just a continuing of uh, extreme hard work on uh, several years that does not uh, somebody achieve with just a few hours of training, of course. So you find these statues everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And you dare criticize Bruce Lee. No, I don't criticize Bruce Lee. Actually, um, I admire his physical skills. But I see also the price that he paid for that. I see also the deception of the people because uh, he's been used by the industry to fool many, 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 many people. And we will go into this uh, later on. So I'm not criticizing Bruce Lee. I'm just looking for the truth. 
I don't care about legions of fanboys. You see, the Backstreet Boys got their fanboys. Elvis got their fanboys. Beatles got their fanboys. I'm only in for the truth because you have to see the broader picture. There is a reason why Bruce Lee had been made famous and it's what's not his physical abilities. I'm not speaking negative about this, uh, this uh, man, but I want to find out why he is such a household name nowadays. And that's not only about his physical abilities. There's an industry behind it who decides who will be famous and who's not. And that's all about money. And uh, the main chief criteria of Bruce Lee, as we have learned in the last session, was uh, he wanted to have 10 million US dollars at his disposal in 1980. He wanted to become a star. That's it. So if his ability would be he would be the world best cook, then he would have maybe opened his own restaurant. If his ability would be that he was the, the, the fastest driver, he would maybe enter uh, racing. Yeah, but his abilities was Kung Fu. And of course, he came from the background of the Chinese opera from his father's side. So it was quite natural because he was also a child movie star in some kind of way when he was uh, very young. His first role he had in 1941 at the age of two months. So he was destined to become a movie actor quite like his father. Bruce Lee had been a child actor, star, a little star in Hong Kong. At the, the age of uh, nine, he did a movie. Yeah, and uh, so he was quite known in Hong Kong. He is Kung for Jesus. Why he's Kung for Jesus? Because he's got now his own paradise. And his paradise they have erected in Macau. Yeah, that's quite convenient because Macau also, as well as Hong Kong, is a special administrative region of China now. So you see they have uh, erected uh, a monument, a statue with its uh, quite uh, not by accident 18 meters high. So three by six. Yeah, so 666 is the number of the beast or of Satan. Yeah, so this is just another idol to deceive the people. Yeah, you don't have to believe the Bible at this moment, uh, but you will um, see all the references uh, in a few sessions from now. Yeah, so that is his paradise. Paradise means the Garden of Eden. We have talked about that briefly at the end of last session. Yeah, you can skip it back if you like. So for all these fanboys out there who th think that I don't have any clue, um, just uh, let me tell you that uh, it's always very really, um, hard to to look at things from a different perspective uh, if you have been used to be uh, deceived all your entire life. So therefore Galatians 4.16 in the Bible is asking, I am therefore become your enemy because they tell you the truth. And that, of course, goes for every idol, if it is uh, James Dean, Elvis Presley, or whomsoever. Yeah, these people have been worshipped like gods. Yeah, little children are falling uh, in uh, in coma at the when when the Beatles began to play. Huh? So. <laughs> Unbelievable. So this is a golden calf. Yeah, people have to worship something they see. They can't worship. Many people are not able to worship anything they can't see because they has, God has to be worshipped in spirit. And uh, many people, they really need a golden calf or something, an idol, a statue, or what else uh, that they can uh, rely on, that they have something to see, something to feel. Yeah. So going back at uh, Bruce Lee's definite chief aim, I have highlighted here the five times I will in his uh, short summary of his uh, definite chief aim in 1969 and his first movie, The Big Boss, he made in 1970. So quite uh, later he got the offer of uh, Hong Kong and then he moved uh, uh, with his family to Hong Kong and uh, there he had his big success. It's the same as these uh, five times I will of the Bible when it comes down to Lucifer, the old name of Satan, when he says, I want to be like the Most High. Yeah, So I want to be worshipped like God. Yeah, But I don't want to be repetitious here. 
I just want to show you the similarities that you really see that it's very strange that he has uh, pinned, it, pinned it down this way. It's quite a similarity here. Now, maybe he was aware of Isaiah 14, I do not know. Yeah, so that we will later talk about. Yeah. So these five times I will, that's also the reason why there is a pentagram. That's a black star, David Bowie would say. Yeah, so that is the pentagram. That's a sticker. I have bought a magazine here of the uh, former witch of New York, the white witch of New York, although there is no white and black in witchcraft. They all they are serving uh, Satan. Yeah, be blessed. Yeah, so nobody can be blessed by a man, but only by God. So this is also a distraction here, but be blessed. And this uh, Wally Ermlach, who is uh, using a uh, kind of a nature religion here, Wicca, from witchcraft, uh, has been uh, refurbished by Jared Gardner in the 1950s, 60s in uh, Great Britain also. These, uh, they are using the satanic symbol of the five-pointed star, as well as the United States flag, as well as uh, the Chinese flag, as well as the flag of the European Union, as well as, as well as, as well as Germany looks uh, looks for the superstar and American Idol, all these uh, are searching stars and Bruce Lee wanted to be a star and stars are being depicted in the Bible as uh, in the prophecy, book of prophecy, revelation as fallen angels. This white witch of New York, Wally Ermlach, we have talked about in the sessions of David Bowie extensively. She had also connections to Mark Bowden from the band T-Rex. That was quite from the same period, beginning of the 1970s, when Mark Bowden of T-Rex had his big hits like uh, Metal Guru or Get It On. Yeah, this was just the beginning of the 1970s. Yeah, these were these were the days of the glamour rock, where when men started to dress like women or putting clothes on like women. <laughs> having long hair like women. Yeah, so therefore, I thought it would be best to go to the script of David Bowie. It has been three years ago, my, my, my. Now you see the tear, the black star, the pentagram, also from the last album of David Bowie. Yeah, so they are all into Satanism. David Bowie also here in women's clothes at the beginning of the 1970s. And that is absolutely forbidden in the Bible. Let's uh, have it a go for Brett. Yeah, Deuteronomy <clears throat> chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that, uh, for all that do so, are an abomination of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are all worshiping Satan. And uh, yeah, well, I think uh, David Bowie did so many sessions about David Bowie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did also drugs and studying occult literature and practices. He needed exorcism. He later said that Satan was living in his indoor swimming pool. And that's why he got in touch with the uh, the so-called White Witch of New York, Wally Elmlark. Well, that's her. The mysterious White Witch who exorcised David Bowie. That's, you can't find it hilarious, but uh, it's been written in the biography of his uh, wife. So uh, I can only tell you what these people are telling. Yeah, he was living, therefore, in a house nearby the Manson murders in 1969, uh, where also Bruce Lee um, was uh, kind of involved because uh, the then husband of uh, Sharon Tate, who has been uh, stabbed to death, being pregnant by the Manson family gang, um, the then husband, Roman Polinski, um, he thought that uh, Bruce Lee would what was one of the murderers. Uh, because somebody found glasses near the site of the murder and uh, Bruce Lee has lost his glasses. Uh, luckily, they found out, the official story goes, that Roman Polanski um, uh, was finding out that Bruce Lee has uh, needed uh, other glasses, more stronger glasses than the ones or the other way around than had been found there. But uh, that's just uh, 
Yeah, according to Mark Spitz Bowie, a biography, Bowie, David Bowie was obsessed with using occult magic to attain success and protection himself from demonic forces. Yeah, and you can look it up as a as a entertainment here, but uh, no, that was uh, quite real. Wally Ermlach has uh, taught magic at the New York School of Occult Arts and Science at the 14th Street of New York. Um, she knew Jimi Hendrix and was also friendly with Mark Bolin, T-Rex. Yeah, a couple of year, years earlier, Ermlach had recorded a spoken word album with King Crimson's Robert Fripp named The Cosmic Children, had never been released. <laughs> there must be a reason why according to some other sources. Yeah, so Angela Bowie, that's uh, that's his former um, wife who has uh, told us in backstage passes, Angela Bowie, about the devil in the pool. Bowie entered the stage of heavy drugs and dabbling in the occult. He would snort cocaine and just read books on the might, magic and the occult, doing what he thought would safeguard his psyche against evil powers and the alike. He read books like the psychic self-defense. Yeah, and so forth. And this has been stated here in that book that he needed that exorcism here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that a few years ago. If somebody is remembering that we did that years ago. I'm not uh, I'm not the one who wants to make here a long story, a short story long. Let me just look it up if there is something important. Yeah, and that uh, Mark Bowden from T-Rex said that rock and roll is magic, his uh, contents are magic and electricity is uh, establishing a connection. Yeah, and uh, he said that, oh, you can also move uh, tables. Yeah. It's like a seance and all that stuff. So he's also into occultism. Very interesting uh, to to learn that he was befriended also with that white witch, uh, Wally Elmlark, because not only that, did, did she had to do sessions in magic in that uh, uh, bizarre school. Uh, that's her. No, it doesn't look like a white witch, doesn't it? Huh? <laughs> it looks like a dark witch. David Bowie signing here a Kabbalah Tree of Life, Judic mysticism. Mm. Yeah, these symbols are not protective. It's the other way around. You attract <laughs> the dark side. Yeah, 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 I've heard that one before, Michael. Oh, I had to. <laughs> you have to crush down so many prejudices. Oh. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. The uh, world is permeated with this stuff. Ah, but there it is here, the source. Yeah, Wally Anna believed T-Rex leader Mark Borden was the reincarnation of Merlin the Magician. Ah, yeah, these people, these people, these people. Yeah, so that was just, uh, that is the pentagram, the five times I will, like the chief aim of Bruce Lee. You see it here in the depiction of Wally Elmlach's uh, pamphlet about uh, Wicca. This is just uh, some pictures of it. I have that magazine, you know, Wicca, the hidden religion, all these pentagrams, pentagrams everywhere. And that girl does not look very happy, doesn't she? Huh? My, my, my. And so there are no white witches. Uh, a witch is a witch is a witch. Which which is which? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay, what a that, Ouija board she was playing with there? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, that's the entry level of uh, Satanism. Yeah. Right. To uh, to introduce people. Oh, it's just uh, it's just a play. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. It's like card reading. Also, it's the same. Yeah. Inside of cold New York. Yeah, Kate Bush also got her witch called Lily. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This world is so all these people are the higher they're ranked in the society, the more they're into Satanism. It's the it's quite logical if you have seen our last session. So I'm going out this of this script now because we want to yeah, we want to make it in the Bruce Lee script. Uh, so the, the largest collections of book on the mysticism are was in New York. And wisers, and uh, 
The owner or the son of the founder said, as I began to meet Wall Street brokers who utilized it and doctors who wanted an understanding of unorthodox medicine and psychologists who use palmistry in their work, I became interested. Yeah. So all these people with money, Wall Street brokers, come on, it's only for the money. Doctors in for the money, psychologists in for the money. Yeah. These are not the, the usual workers, lay people, mountaineers. No, these are just Wall Street brokers. They want to have more money, more material power. Yeah. So Satan has been given all the materialistic things in this world, according to Luke 4, 4 in the Bible. Yeah, therefore, they are all in it. They are all in the same boat. What did you say, Michael? Uh, was it Second uh, Corinthians four four? Luke four four. Oh, Luke I think four. you meant the God of this world. But I meant yeah. here that uh, all this power and glory has been given to Satan and who who whomsoever um, will worship Satan, yeah, will have his share. Yeah, so it's it's look for for one thing leads to another. Yeah, but remember second second Corinthians four four, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel yeah. of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yes, sure, but also in Luke 4, 4, the devil taking him unto an high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it, and thou will worship me. I can't show you so many things at the same time, but of course I'm so polite that I show you also 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Well, that's my point, Michael, is that, you know, it's no wonder that people go that way because, you know, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, these people who have simple minds. Well, we all sim have simple minds, Michael. It's just which way do you want to have faith? Do you want to have faith in, in the God of glory? You know, he's got the glory. We don't. It's his I glory. Did. I, I did not want to make a cheap joke, but I just want to point out that there is a group called Simple Minds who are also worshipping Satan or Lucifer. Um, when you see their songs like Sanctify Yourself or um, This Earth You Walk Upon, these are or Seeing Out the Angel, these are all songs they made uh, to really to glorify yeah, Satan. Yeah, yeah, but Michael, you know, there's two different ways. And th this is the way of man to always glorify himself. You know, it's like saying all music is bad, Michael. Mm -hmm. No, there's good music. Yeah, nowadays I prefer instrumental music because I can't worship Satan that there much. There you in go. The instrumental music. There you go. I, I agree with you. Mm. So the higher you up in the hierarchy, the more you have to save, serve Satan. Yeah, David Bowie was into occultism, as many other people too. Yeah, but you can't only serve God or the Mammon. So coming back to Bruce Lee, finally, Bruce Lee as the Asian role model of the 20th century. Let me put it this way. Yeah, maybe on second place, maybe, I do not know, Jackie Chan, maybe, but just Bruce Lee everywhere. Yeah, this guy has such a legacy, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, but you see that if some people worship Bruce Lee or somebody else, they violate the absolute first commandment, Brett. Mm -hmm. Thou shall have no other gods before me, yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know what the first love is, right? Yeah, and also they love. should not make any graven image. Yeah. Yeah, so, but they just erecting statues all over the world, not only for Bruce Lee, but uh, there are many uh, Bruce Lee uh, statues. Yeah, listen statues, to what it so. said right back up a second, Michael, back to Exodus 20, verse 1. See, this is really what it's all about. Exodus 20, verse 1, where it says, uh, that uh, 
I'm sorry, Michael, I'll make you go through this. No, 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 I have to make it to there. Thank you. Yeah. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And what's going on today with this agenda, Michael? Mm -hmm. It's all about bringing it back. Bringing us back into the house of bondage, bringing us back into the land of Egypt, making Egypt new and afresh. Mm -hmm. That's what the stinking world is doing. It's all about reviving Babylon right mm -hmm. before your eyes and making a joke out of it so you laugh about it. And it's really funny, isn't it? Mm -hmm. As you lose your soul. Mm -hmm. You go laughing to hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we're at, Michael. Yeah. Okay, these are the the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, Daniel three five. Mm-hmm. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music? Ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the people are doing actually. And then in the moment when the music, then the guitar is coming, or somebody is singing, La! they lose their minds. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. But this high hysteria is, has been fed by the media. Yeah, so. Can you can you imagine that these people are out of their minds? They are young people, of course. And when I was confronted with Bruce Lee, I was 14 or so. And Bruce Lee, of course, is a role model for for all the people who are being bullied around. Yeah, that uh, slim Chinese actor can beat up anybody. If I would have the abilities of Bruce Lee, nobody would beat me down. Yeah, so that this many many people are very um, affected to Bruce Lee, who have been just bullied uh, in in the youth, for example. I am a Beatle maniac. Oh my! She does not know anybody. She only knows the public picture has been, but which has been presented to her. Yeah, she does not know anybody of them in person. And. Somebody who can have rupees and uh, is touring all over the world and has so much money is usually not interested in a poor young girl. I think these pictures speak for themselves. I'm not telling yet these are not the same people who are falling for Bruce Lee, of course. It is mainly a male audience. Yeah, but you don't have to. You don't want to know all these all these details. I think. Yeah, but what's what's the same is that this beetle had officially been discovered in uh, Germany in Hamburg <clears throat> in the so-called Star Club, 1962. And later on, that uh, image has been modified. Brad, look at this. The Star Club now with <laughs> lesser. <laughs> yeah, a pentagram instead of a hexagram, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. It's it's everywhere. It's it's also everywhere that symbol, huh? It's everywhere. So it's if we would go down the road of Beatles, it's where do you start? Yeah. Beatles actually are named uh um, after Capri, the uh, the Egyptian eagle, and yeah, okay, you don't want to know that. I think, I think you don't want to know that. Yeah, so, the Beatles have made a white album, which uh, was published exactly five years after the assassination on John F. Kennedy, which was original, by the way. Yeah, so there are no coincidences. Yeah, you were saying that, Michael. So twenty-two plus eleven is thirty-three. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Freemason ritual on that behalf, but on only on the outside, so that people who are delving into the subject for hours and days, months, years, or whatsoever, they will find that. Oh, yeah, it, now oh, I know yeah. The truth. and here's a, here's another thing about 1968. 1968 was the year that that uh, movie was released to the public. Uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. 
And that's 33 years before 2001. Mm -hmm. So there's that whole thing, too. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. These all, yeah. this, everything ties together. Here. Everything ties together. If you would go into the Beatles, we would know we would need 10, 10 more uh, hours. And uh, oh, Sergeant sure. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club's band in the when they were doing that movie Rosemary's Baby of the Moonchild uh, for of, of Satan, referring to Devil's Pepper of Rosemary and Rosemary's Baby. Uh, they had uh, that uh, Satanist Alistair Crowley on the cover of that uh, album here, the Beatles. Beatles were also Satanists. We can we have so much things to prove that. But where to start? Maybe later, maybe later. Yeah, maybe later. The first thing that I wanted to do in the line of uh, my research to uh, Bruce Lee is uh, to look for the basic things because many people are not uh, starting from the basics but just want to see what's on the surface. I want to know the foundation of it all. If you go down the path of what actually are martial arts, uh, many people are telling you, yeah, the true story of blood sports. That's an excerpt or a still picture here. A lifetime material, uh, sorry, a lifetime martial arts is a noble spiritual path. Yeah, but sorry, it has to be done with weapons. It has to be done with the uh, fighting. Yeah, so it is not only a noble spiritual path. That's just the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that is just uh, incorrect explanation. Martial arts has to do with fighting. Yeah, why? You simply look it up in etymology online. The explaining of martial means warlike or to pertaining to war. Yeah, so it has to do with war. It has nothing to do with the biblical of uh, uh, love thou neighbor as yourself. It has to do with war. Kill your neighbor. And not be killed by him. From medieval Latin martialis of Mars of war or war from Latin Mars, Roman god of war. So if you are into martial arts, you are venerating a Roman god without even knowing it. Yeah, you can refuse now to, to, to or stop the session, stop anything listening and say, these people are out of their minds, but we are here to sort things out. This is the correct interpretation of martial arts. These are the arts of war. And as there are martial arts, these are the arts of the Roman art of war. You can be an Asian guy when you say that, no, I'm not doing Kung Fu. They speak not of Kung Fu, but of Gung Fu. But anybody would say that I'm a martial artist. Then he says that I am venerating a Roman god. That's quite easy. That's that what the name says. And the name has some meaning. In Latin, it says nomen est omen. So the name has a meaning. Everything has a meaning. So... This is Mars. This is the God that people are venerating without even knowing when they are doing martial arts. Not when they are doing Kung Fu or Karate or Judo or boxing. But if somebody says that I'm a martial artist, then he's referring to a wrong God. Simple as it is. So this is Mars. Furious Mars was the Roman God of rage, passion, destruction and war. So where is the positive side in that? Mars ruled early Rome as a part of the archaic triad, a masculine ruling triumvirate that also included Jupiter and Quirinus. The early Romans referred Mars as a great raging god whose fury inspired the savagery of warfare and produced the stunning accompaniment of the Roman arms. Yeah, the Roman army, of course, Roman was uh, the, was and is the last empire. Yeah. So it is. According to the mytho historical accounts of the founding of Rome, Mars was the father of the twins Romulus and Remus. And this, according to mythology, were the two who have founded the city of Rome, so called the Eternal City. In the Bible, Rome has been depicted as, yeah, as the great city. <laughs> Yeah, but not in a favorable way, but uh, just in, uh, in a very destructive way. Yeah, this is the whore who sitteth at many waters. Yeah, this uh, is uh, m m 
Mystery Babylon the Great. Yeah, so Rome or in, in Rome, Mars was the father of the two founders, Romulus and Remus. So that he was a, a god of war who has been worshipped there. Um, not only there, but also in uh, in the entire Roman Empire then. Yeah, Mars and the Roman state religion. He was a key figure in the Roman pantheon, so of the pagan gods. Mars was regarded as a kind of second in command to Jupiter and uh, so forth and so forth and so forth. Yeah, so that's it. And Mars is, is quite the, uh, the root guy. And when it comes to tactical and strategic thoughts, then it is uh, the, the female Minerva. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when it comes down to tactics, yeah, it's female. When it comes down to sheer brute force and power, then it is Mars, then it is male. Aha. Mm -hmm. So that these are the remains of the Mars temple in Rome, the temple of Mars Ultra. Mars Ultra means Mars the Avenger. That's reminded me of an old series of the 1960s from Great Britain. Once again, Great Britain had occupied long, um, Great Britain had occupied Hong Kong until 1997. That is a series called The Avengers with the world famous Emma Peel, played by a member of the British Empire, I think she was later on, Diana Rick, Emma Peel. She was displaying a karate girl in the 1960s. So that was the time when karate and boxing was uh, getting famous until 1970 on a big scale, on a big screen, Bruce Lee came around to switch it then to Chinese Kung Fu martial arts. Yeah? So what would Emma Peel do? She, of course, she would do karate to hit and to destroy her opponents. Yeah, she's into martial arts. Karate. Karate means the empty hand, so you fight without weapons. Yeah, empty hand. Karate. Mm -hmm. And now you look at the similarity between her dress in the 1960s and the dress of Bruce Lee in Game of Death 1972. It has been started. Yeah, with his dress, although he wanted to make a leopard movie after on and that's the official explanation i think it was uh, why he has chosen that these colors and it's quite uh, interesting that uh, emma peel or diana rick in her character he used that uh, side stripe training dress quite a few years before emma peel had or diana rick had been taking karate lessons which made her no carbon copy kathy Etc. 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 So that's uh, here from the Avengers. You see here the reference to Mars, the Avenger, and that's the Avengers. Yeah, it's not not uh, depicted here, but here's the Avenger girl Diana Rick. Yeah, so he she does martial arts, and therefore they have named maybe that sessions the Avengers. My, 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 what a coincidence, huh? Diana Rick in iconic cat suit. And of course, uh, later on, before you think that I have forgot it, um, it's of course the same reference with the dress then in uh, Kill Bill. Hmm? Yeah, that's the same. That's also um, a reference to Bruce Lee here. Hmm? Uh, if I remember correctly, Uma Thurman. But it's just not uh, important now. So let's get back. Yeah, this is just uh, from the first uh, episode, The Avengers. It's a karate blow delivered by an expert. It breaks the necks easier. Mm -hmm. So it's all about that's a special tactic, and uh, these people are. Uh, able to kill. Yeah, so it's a, it's a deadly force, this karate. 
Yeah, so that is then presented to the public like superhumans. These people, these sportsmen, these karate practitioners, they are superhuman. They have special abilities that no one outside the karate world does not have. Yeah, so that is experts. Mm -hmm. Back to Mars. In Rome's Forum of Augustus, commissioned by Octavian and completed in 42 before Christ, the Temple of Mars Ultra celebrated the God's role in the Battle of Philippi, which saw Octavian cross Jusa, Julius Caesar's assassins. Mars was accorded the respect owed to a deity of his high office. Festivals were held to honor him in March and October. <laughs> Why? Um, the beginning and the end of the campaigning season. He was honored, especially in March, a month named for him. So if you speak about, yes, I have been born in March, then you have been born in a month which has a relationship to the Roman god of war. Not speaking about that these people are making war, of course, but this month has been named again after a pagan god, after Mars, March. The Romans would typically offer rams and bulls to Mars at sacrifices or hostiae. Yeah, so it's a veneration. Mm -hmm. Mars has survived in the popular lexicon thanks to its various cultural elements that bear his name. The Romans bestowed his name upon the fourth planet from the sun, Mars. So you see, it's not only a month, it's not only a Roman god, but it's also a planet. The great red planet aptly symbolized the god fiery passion. Mars was also the source of the name March, which in Latin was known as Martius. For many centuries, and that's very important, March was the first month of the Roman lunar year. And that is also very, very, very important and natural because nature starts when winter is over. So the first of March or March in general is the start of the actual year. All other things have been modified into the Gregorian calendar from Pope Gregory. So it's all the papacy who are trying to change times and laws. It's a natural law, if you would like to say so, that the year begins then when nature awakes and not when nature is asleep in January. January, usually uh, the month we call after Janus, a Roman god, when it is coldest. So look at any climate diagram and you will see that January usually is the coldest month of the year. So why should this year start there? This reason is simple because there was a Pope Sylvester um, whose uh, veneration day is on the 31st of December, and they decided then to split the year, um, yeah, and to venerate this Pope. Michael. Mm. Yes. So, Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, but our listeners should know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, let me, uh, This is what Michael is making reference to. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change times and laws and they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now we can't go into every detail of this verse, but what Michael was just simply pointing out is that the Antichrist is simply thinking to change times and laws. Doesn't mean that he's successfully done it, but it does because he's in control of the world system. So the world system goes ahead and views it that way, just like the view of the calendar, right, Michael? Yeah, it's just simple to deceive the people. Yeah, usually you have to ask yourself, uh, why has it been changed? Because it is absolutely unnatural. But mm -hmm. many people do not know, and many so-called Christians uh, do just follow a man instead of God. So they follow the Pope or any Pope or the papacy. And the papacy in the old Protestant uh, way of uh, of actual history, the papacy is the Antichrist. Uh, he's the uh, substitute, uh, self-claimed substitute, but actually he's just the... Yeah. Uh, That's the crux of the problem, essentially, yeah. because 
uh, sadly, uh, no one teaches that that the uh, the protest, you know, the time when everyone in the world knew what the problem was at that time. Uh, you know, it's it's a shame we've lost that history and it's not taught anymore from the perspective of, you know, uh, the Great Reformation, because that's when. You know. The powers that be or the powers that used to be were diminished uh, and stripped of their kingdom. And we're talking about the Pope's power. So today we have the Pope rising back up, don't we, Michael? Yeah. And if you would know the Bible, you would know the, the colors of scarlet and purple and all the stuff. And you see that there's Revelation only one. chapter 17 and 18. Everyone should know that, too. Yeah, but uh, where to start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Revelation yeah, and Daniel are very, very critical. Yeah. Yes. They're the and prophetic. And so you see that it's so easy to, to, uh, to see the truth, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is also a sun symbol here and not a uh, part of a bread. You see that you don't uh, cut the bread uh, with the... Oh, the Eucharist, yeah. The Eucharist, you don't cut it out uh, circular. <laughs> okay, but that's a mess in its own. Oh, yeah. it sure is. The doctrine of transubstantiation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the red planet aptly symbolized the God's fiery passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The red planet. It's a red planet. It's called Mars. Welcome to Mr. Musk. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Musk. Mr. Musk has a son called XAI AX12 and, uh, and has a, also Exadark, Ciderel, Musk. And you see, this guy is into transhumanism. Quite, uh, quite obvious. Quite obvious. Yeah, and so this guy who says Occupy Mars, who officially is, uh, is offering people to fly to Mars, um, it's just uh, has is, is, has another meaning here. That means uh, that he's serving the Roman God. Yeah. Nobody asks uh, how can anybody be so successful just to erase a company. Uh, making electric cars and all the stuff. Where does he have all the connections? Where does he have all that money? Yeah, so these people are just beating. Putin well, it's just on. like this Zuckerberg character came yeah, out of nowhere, yeah. right? And came yeah. up with Facebook idea. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Musk wants to go in five years to Mars from 2023 onwards. So in 2028, there will be war. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that would be one suggestion here. Yeah, occupy Mars. Yeah, so he's he's a he's into a Roman God. Yeah, you don't have to believe me. You will see that uh, in the future what will happen then, and you will also see that it wouldn't won't be possible to go to Mars. But it's just an agenda to fool people into a heliocentric sorcery system. So Mars is the name of a bright reddish orange planet in the heavens, like uh, a. According to the Roman god of war, mm -hmm. he has also agricultural attributes that would uh, be the same as Saturn, which is Satan then. The planet was so named by the Romans, no doubt, for its blood-like color. Huh? So this is the official explanation on the internet from Etymology Online about the planet called Mars. The planet was so named by the Romans, no doubt, for its blood-like color. And now I show you... The papal shoes. If you go to Wikipedia and search for papal shoes, they say the red shoes also symbolize the submission of the Pope to the ultimate authority of Jesus Christ. And we know, because we have just talked about, that the colors of the Harlot Church or the Hall of Babylon are scarlet and purple. And we have just learned, because it says here by Etymology Online, the planet was named, no doubt, for its blood-like color. And now Wikipedia wants to fool you into believing that red has something to do with submission. No, it has something to do with the blood-like color. Because no organization in the world have shed so many blood 
in the past, like the papacy. Think of all these so-called crusades. Yeah, think of all these so-called missionaries. Think of Latin America as the Indios. What we had become of their ancestors. My, 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 my. You see that Wikipedia is no source for truth. Yeah. And red shoes also is a synonym also for the wizard, speaking of witchcraft, speaking of Wicca, speaking of Satan, the wizard of Oz, the red slippers. Now you got it in one picture. Yeah, the what red. is this, Michael? It says beyond this, it is said that the red papal shoes also signify God's burning love for humanity as exhibited during Pentecost when the red vestments are worn to commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles as tongues of fire rest upon their heads. Oh, really? Yeah, these are fairy tales for adults. Yeah. Man, it's called exoteric learning. Yeah. Not esoteric. No, no, no. We dare not speak of esoteric learning, Michael. Yeah. Because everyone will hate our guts if we do. Because you know what? There's two sides to every coin, isn't there? Yeah, but you see that here the witch uh, is then uh, holding their magic staff to the red shoes or the red slippers of Dorothy who wants to get back to Kansas <laughs> in the Wizard of Oz with her dog Toto. That's uh, where the name of the rock band is derived from. Yeah, and so her magic has been uh, symbolized with the five pointed star. And now you can guess uh, why every big organization in this world has a five pointed star because they all belong to the worshippers of Satan. You know, it's interesting. There was some time ago, Michael, I found this picture of Pope Francis being uh, paraded around and they had a um, a very dark colored pentagram on a stick there mm -hmm. too. And uh, it was in the picture and you could see it clear as day. It's just so strange, but I guess nothing is that out of the ordinary when you come down to the dogmas of the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, you see these uh, priests of the Roman Catholic Church, they are sorcerers because they are commanding Jesus Christ uh, into that uh, small bread into the during the Eucharist. Yeah, you see no other man is able to command God, but the Roman Catholic priest. Well, that's what they claim, right? So, that's what they claim, yeah. Yeah, they're full of my, it. My, 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 you see that. But just people are only being indoctrinated to follow orders by authority. The authority oh, from Michael. the professor, authority <laughs> from the doctor, authority from the priest. Don't remember, question authority. Remember, remember the old term bull, you know, papal yeah. bull, you know, mm. we also call it BS. Yeah, <laughs> paper bullshit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh boy. It's yeah, so, so that, that's what I meant. You have to educate yourself. You have to see mm -hmm. the symbolism. You have to, to learn everything because you won't get the truth in media, school, university, nowhere. You have to look for yourself. Yeah. Even when you do not expect it. Because this is the mass symbol of the famous Scandinavian car manufacturer Volvo. That's where you would least have expected that, I think. But this is how our world works, actually. This is how our world works. It's all works on symbolism. At Toyota here, nothing is impossible. Yeah, it's just the rings of Saturn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's Mitsubishi, the three diamonds. Yeah, it's a trequeta, it's a symbol of Trinity. Subaru is a symbol of stars. Yeah, Saturn, there's also an American brand or division called Saturn cars. Yeah, and it goes on and on and on. You see, Nike also has the, Nike is a, is a Greek goddess. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as well as they are showing you also the, the ring uh, around Saturn here. Chevron is also a symbol of authority of Satan, but why, why you find it on the stickers of the military. Yeah, and it goes on and on and on and on. You could uh, explain every symbol. It's, this is how our world is running. Kia is also a spirit. It's it's a it's a pagan god. 
We had to start. Mercedes-Benz also you got the, the, the ring of Saturn here, if you would like to see. It's in the middle of a so-called star. But it's also a, a, a trinity symbol. Uh, Maserati has a trident of a Neptune Poseidon. <laughs> it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere in this world. Yeah. You won't get famous if you do not serve Satan. Yeah. AAA. Now Citroen with the Chevron. It's everywhere. And this is at the most prominent. Yeah, it's just the, the pentagram, and if there is a circle around it, then it's called the penta circle. Yeah, or a magic circle. Mm -hmm. So magic inside the circle. Yeah, so March is the third month of our year now since uh, the newly developed uh, Gregorian calendar. But it used to be the first month because Mars has been depicted as male. And uh, the beginning of the year is uh, when the seed, so mass means male, means force, means brood, means power, means seed, yeah, it's been planted. Planted where? Where into, yeah, you know what I'm what try, trying to say. <clears throat> yeah, but you have to have the seed first be, before it uh, be, becomes, uh, becomes a fruit. Hmm? And so that's, that's mass, yeah. Oh, it's That's interesting also the, you mentioned seed. You also need soil, too. You need to prepare your soil properly, Michael. Mm -hmm. So so very, very vital to... Uh, yeah, but soil would be female, yeah, because it is on the receiving end. Yeah. So you need the seed and you need the soil. So it, you need male and you need female to uh, receive a fruit in the end. And that's also the reason uh, why the zodiac... So zodiac means the... Uh, the 360 degree circle divided into 12 areas of so-called fixed stars around the ecliptic in astrology begins with Mars. So it mm, begins Michael. with impulse. Yes. Yes. Have you studied the Bible when it speaks of the soil? That the, the seed, when it falls on good ground, mm, yeah. it can mm -hmm. actually, actually yield, you know, uh, tenfold, hundredfold. Mm -hmm. So, what is preparing the soil in the terms of the Bible? I yes. tend to think more of the soil being the soul, your emotions. You know, if you yeah. Also, it is it is the message of the um, um, of of the German Evangelium, um, mm -hmm. the message of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it if it falls on fruitful ground, uh, then it will uh, become become uh, fruit and prosperous. Uh, yes, prosperous and uh, multiply. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, right. if it then falls on uh, on dry ground, uh, nobody wants to hear. Uh, you got people with deaf ears spiritually. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear the truth because they are just too busy venerating their images and idols and just uh, to socialize. Yeah, because many people or the majority of people are just only looking what the majority of people are doing. Yeah, so it's very easy to manipulate the masses. Yeah, once you have manipulated them, um, it's very hard uh, for people to uh, to have an individual thought because they are being. Uh, forced uh, to uh, obey uh, because that's democracy democracy means oh, uh, that that is the prime introduction what you just said michael to a video that was done some years ago on uh, the bbc believe it or not called mm -hmm. uh the um ah what was that again now um happiness machines mm -hmm. And the very first episode was about propaganda artist um, Edward Barnes. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. very yeah. interesting study for anyone that's in, anyone interested. Go look it up. Uh, yeah, I got I got a book of him here, Crystallizing Public Opinion, which had been mm -hmm. used by Josef Goebbels, the German propaganda minister. There and, you uh, go. See, they yeah. all work together. There. Yeah, all work together, and he was also a uh, relative to Sigmund Freud. Yeah, so they yes, were just uh, yes, yes, supporting each other. Really, really important information for anyone just starting to come to the knowledge of, of history and, you know, putting things into perspective. 
Yeah, you've been fooled all your life. But yes. you see that your education, yes. your, edu your education has been uh, done by the state. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the state does not want to have critical thinkers. The state just wants to have people who just obey. That's it. Well, the state wants to take away Christ and replace him with the false, you know, it's all your indoctrination too, isn't it? Mm. it? It all works together. Yeah, again. It all works together, yes. Yeah, that's why we say we have to reformat the mind. We have to reprogram the mind because we've all been programmed by this false system. Mm. And, uh, you know, maybe somewhere along your life, you break down from it. I know I sure did. Mm. But, you know, if you don't know what's going on with you, it's easy to fall right back in and, and mm. uh, get taken by the enemy. So. Yeah, so that's Mars. That's usually the first house in astrology, which means the force and your, your, your motivation in life. Yeah, so that is Mars. And it's very interesting when you see that in the case of Bruce Lee, uh, you see where the sun is. The sun is very prominent in his, uh, in his horoscope at the time of birth at 7, 12 a.m. in the hospital of San Francisco. The sun is standing on the ascendant, yeah, so the, this is here the sunrise, so he's born exactly, almost exactly at sunrise. Yeah, so you can see when people are superstitious, uh, they will say that, oh yeah, he's been born to conquer the world, yeah, the world has been waiting for him, yeah, because he has been born at sunrise, yeah, so sun is going up, a star is rising. Hmm? But later, much later. Yeah, much later. We are just into martial arts. Yeah, so every planet and every Roman god has a several meaning. And uh, the Roman Catholic Church, as we have mentioned, as the Hall of Babylon, as the uh, seat of the Antichrist, as uh, the Harlo Church and whatever title you will give to her, they are, these are sun worshippers. That's also the reason why the Eucharist, uh, this bread or this loaf of so-called bread mm. is circular. It's like a sun. Mm. It's a sun symbol. They are sun worshippers. Uh, that's why they worship the Sunday instead of the Sabbath. Yeah, The day of the sun has been worshipped instead of... Uh, oh, yeah. And that's ancient. Yeah. That's been around for thousands of years. That's been around, years. yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's kind of how it all ties back to the natural man as mentioned in the bible mm -hmm. you know all these yeah. things uh yeah. yeah there's a big differentiation between a believer of christ and a believer that uh says uh has no faith mm -hmm. yeah so bruce, bruce lee had got a dominant son and so that uh, people will say that uh, it, the, the family of Bruce Lee, I do not know if they were in astrology, but I know they were very superstitious. We will go into later, later into this. Um, yeah, they many will say that, oh, yeah, he was a star, a star has been born, yeah, so so to speak. Also, he has been uh, born in the year of the dragon and in the, in the hour of the dragon, according to the Chinese uh, astrology calendar. And so that is so important uh, when you know. Now know um, that Mars, martial arts, means a Roman god called Mars. And martial arts means then the art of Mars or the art of war. So oh, what this yes. Sun Tzu character here depicts actually is just only the translation of martial arts, means the art of war. And that is a very prominent book also among historians and also, of course, among martial arts practitioners. Mm. This Sun Tzu character was supposed a Chinese military general, strategist, philosopher and writer who lived during the Eastern period of uh, 1771 to 256 BCE before Common Era or before Christ. To suppress Christ, they have change the times and laws according to Daniel 7.25, so therefore it does not uh, uh, been, is, is not been promoted as uh, before Christ, but before common era. Yeah? So nobody knows where that Sun Tzu has lived. It could be 700, it could be 250. 
It's the same like uh, some um, allegedly Ch uh, Greek philosophers, which we have found out in our series, science is the new religion. His birth name, according to legend, is Sun Wu. The name Sun Tzu, by which he is more popularly known, is an honorific, which means Master Sun. So the master of the sun, or the one who masters the sun. So that means we are already into somebody who is a mythical figure, yeah, or a legendary historical military figure, and nobody knows anything exact, except this book, Master Sun, Master Sun. There are many, many religions who are worshipping the sun. It's the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, everybody who's worshipping Satan, Saturn, it's Satan. Yeah, IHS is worshipping uh, uh, Saturn because Saturn is, is uh, incorporated in the H system here, on the H symbol, IHS. It's a cross and at the same time, it's a kind of a... Um, Saturn symbol, and all the all these people are just uh, worshiping Saturn, the black planet of limitation, death, fear, social order, poverty. Mm -hmm. The black sun. It's like in the um, in in Germany, the Third Reich, they had also the uh, swastika, which is uh, kind of a black sun. And that that is not correct. IHS is the exoteric explanation here. Mm, you know, Michael, uh, it's mentioned in the book Rulers of Evil mm -hmm. about Sun Tzu. Yeah, we shortly will come to this. Oh, OK, I'll be quiet then. Yeah, mm -hmm. because there's also a very interesting phrase coming from Michelangelo Tamburini, the 14th Jesuit general. Who says, see, sir, from this chamber, I govern not only to Paris, but to China, not only to China, but to all the world without anyone to know how I do it. And that is coming from uh, a book, The Engineers, Corpse of Hell or Rome's Sappers and Miners, page 33. In that paragraph here. Hmm? That's the last one here. The Engineered Corpse of Hell, Rome's. Sappers and miners, once again, Rome. All roads lead to Rome, and there is nothing good coming out of Rome. There is, for example, the Club of Rome, who says that there are limits to growth now, and uh, we have to depopulize. Hmm? The Club of Rome. I leave it up to your imagination or research uh, who is steering and uh, founding that Club of Rome in the late 19th century. 60s. Yeah, hmm. so that was a quote here that the Jesuits, as the military army of the papacy of the Roman Pope, remember the god of war is Mars, is claiming that they are governing not only China but the entire world from his office. It's also um, depicted in many other books, and it's uh, not to be underestimated that uh, quote from uh, the Jesuit general Michelangelo Tamburini 300 years before. Yeah, 300 years before Tamburini, the general of the Jesuits. 300 years before, they tell you that they are governing China and the entire world. My, my, my. Now we are 300 years later. And it's so obvious that everything is coming back. Yeah. Always the Jesuits. It's always the Roman Catholic Church in disguise. And of course, if it is a military operation here, the Jesuits, because uh, they have been set by the Pope, 
that the military regime of the church, that's what Regimini Militantis Ecclesia actually means, that's Latin, that's the regime of the military church. Of course, they would be glad to have a book, to have a kind of operation manual for war, for Mars or the art of war by Sun Tzu. And as they are also sun worshippers, I think that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, we could do thousands of sessions upon it, but I'm just uh, skipping it forward. Ah, it's so it's, it's unbelievable, but we, we cannot do anything, everything here. Sorry, we, there are book readings of Rules of Evil, and that book also is officially been available on archive.org. Yeah. So Sun Tzu's historicity is uncertain. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything. His work has been praised and employed throughout the arc of East Asian military history since its composition. During the 20th century, the art of war grew in popularity and saw practical use in the Western world as well. Yeah. The oldest available sources disagree as to where Sun Tzu was born. Nobody knows a thing. Nobody knows a thing. You can look it up. It's just Wikipedia uh, BS here. <laughs> the art of war, statues, images and idols. Huh? During the Gulf War in the 1990s, both generals Norman Schwarzkopf and Colin Powell employed principles from Sun Tzu related to deception, speed and striking one's enemy weak points. Deception, yeah, like Satan. Yeah, deception, using deception, using lies, deceiving people. Yeah, the end justifies the means, the Jesuits claim. So this is a book that uh, Brett has uh, mentioned before. That is the book called Rulers of Evil, Useful Knowledge About Governing Bodies from F. Tapasorsi. And from that book, we have here uh, several excerpts, which is uh, about this uh, Sun Tzu character. And as the Brett is eager to read it, uh, I will enhance it a bit so that he has a much more easy job. I hope, uh, tell me if, if that is uh, big enough or shall I enhance it a little bit further? Ah, oh, you can go further. I got a tiny screen, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So this is 250%, Perfect. maybe? Perfect. Better? Okay. The reputed author of this work is a quasi-historical Chinese general believed to have lived in the 6th century BC named Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu was unknown to Western languages until Joseph Marie Amiot, astronomer to the Emperor of China, brought forth a French edition of the 13 articles in 1772. Amiot was a Jesuit priest under obedience to General Ritchie. I base my inference that Ritchie is the author of Amiot's Sun Tzu's, uh, excuse me, Amiot's Sun Tzu on a remark from today's premier Jesuit spokesman, Malachi Martin, retired professor at the Pontifical Institute in Rome to the effect that a book written by a Jesuit due to the obedience factor can be presumed, quote unquote, in essence, to be the work of his superior general. Amiot's Sun Tzu then can be presumed to have been written by Lorenzo Ricci. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sure. we could go on and on and yeah. on. And it's not it's not easy um, to imagine because uh, we have uh, heard before from a quote from uh, the 14th Jesuit black general Michelangelo Tamburini that he is governing China also in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so look how close it is. Mm -hmm. 1772 to the quote we have just read. This is 50 years after the quote. It is very close in the timeline after that quotation that he that the Jesuits are governing the not only Paris but China, not only China but the whole entire world. 
Yeah. So when he is claiming that in the beginning of the 18th century and uh, 50, 60, 70 or what years later, then the French edition of that th is coming out, then is at least the French edition of that been uh, translated by the Jesuits. And we are quite certain here that Sansu is another development uh, of uh, the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits in particular, because the Jesuits are a military, the Roman military regime of the church, because they have taken over the Inquisition by the Dominicans or from the Dominicans in 1540. Yeah, you could say that it's Satan's spiritual arm, couldn't you? Yeah, not only spiritual, but just, just military arm. And so it is no wonder that also the military of a very famous uh, states or the United States of America also have that pentagram symbol on it because they are making war. The art of war. What we have just right, learned. But is Michael, I'm just simply saying their spiritual aspect is all mm -hmm. about war. It's all about fighting and killing off the Protestants. That's all it is. Mm. Yeah, you see, it's 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 everywhere. It's everywhere, actually. Well, we yeah, the reference to Caesar is significant. The the reference to Caesar is significant. China had not been suppressed or occupied by the Roman Empire. Yeah, well, well, I think it's easy because we're in the Roman age, Michael. Yeah. Yep. According to the book of Daniel, we're in the Roman age. Hasn't yeah. ended yet. Yeah, that's 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 really. I believe that anyone reading Amiot Sansu in 1772, knowing that its translator was a Jesuit, knowing the Jesuit mission. And knowing the nature of Jesuitic obedience could observe world events with this knowledge and predict that the dispute between the American colonists and the British Empire would end, as it actually did, in Roman dominance over a new independent republic. <sighs> you see? We are not the only one who think that uh, the Jesuits played a big part in the invention of Sansu. Sansu says, from the art of war, a quote of the book, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Well, aren't the Jesuits been very prominent for being a wolf in sheep's clothing? Yeah, to know their enemies better. Yeah. So many of the historical problems with understanding Sun Tzu's work can be traced back to his first Western translation. A Jesuit missionary, Father Amiot, first brought the art of war to the West, translating it into French in 1782. Um, Bruno's of Evil speak of 1772. Unfortunately, this translation started the tradition of mistranslating Sansu's work, starting with the title The Art of War. This title copied the title of a popular work by Machiavelli, but it didn't reflect Sansu's being far, which would be better translated as competitive methods. Hmm. We cannot say what effect being translated by the Jesuit priest had upon the text. It was unavoidable that the work's translation reflected the military prejudices of the time area then War was both popular and Christian. Uh, uh, it was never Christian. <laughs> it was Catholic. There you go. <laughs> Again, yeah. so many times we find this. However, war was on the verge of becoming much less Christian in the West since this time was the area of the French Revolution. Oh, it was quite some years before the French Revolution, right? Mm -hmm. The work might well have slipped into obscurity after its initial publication, but it was discovered by a minor French military officer. Oh, a military officer, once again. Maybe a Freemason, huh? After studying it, this officer rose to the head of the evolutionary French army in a surprising series of victories. The legend is that Napoleon used to work as the key to his victor victories in conquering all of you. Yeah, well, that was my suspicion before, because... Um, Napoleon was a Jesuit in disguise and officially a Freemason. Huh? <laughs> it is said that he carried the little work with him everywhere, but kept his content secret, which would be very much in keeping with Sun Tzu's theories. 
Yeah. However, Napoleon must have started believing his own reviews instead of sticking with his study of Sun Tzu. His defeat at Waterloo was clearly, which is in Belgium, by the way, was clearly a case of fighting on a battleground that the enemy Wellington knew best. Wellington's trick at Waterloo was hiding his forces by having them lie down in the slight hollows of his silly land. This is exactly the type of tactic Sun Tzu warns against in his discussion of terrain tactics. After Napoleon, Sun Tzu's theories were making, making their way into Western military philosophy. Many of his ideas are reflected in the ideas of work of Karl von Clausewitz, who defined military strategy as, quote unquote, the employment of battles to gain the end of war. Yeah, well, and, as, and I added here Napoleon, well, don't forget he was a Freemason. Huh? Yeah, but when the Jesuit uh, superior general was been quoted here in a French book, Andrew Steinmetz, History of the Jesuits, Volume 1. Mm. Sure. See, not only China. Not only China, but the entire world, including the British Empire, which occupied Hong Kong. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, would you start? You see, we are doomed in this world. We are really, doomed. we are living in a satanic world and the majority of people do not get it. They do not get it. That's the Jesuit general. From this chamber, I govern not only to Paris, but to China, not only to China, but to all the world without anyone to know how I do it. Well, of course, using the Roman Catholic Church and their confession. And they had Jesuitical confessors to the French kings, for example, Ludwig, uh, the Sun King, Ludwig the Fourteenth. Yeah, there is so much to to learn about that. That is coming here from another quote: Jacopo Leone, the Jesuit conspiracy, the secret plan of the order, from 1848. Yeah, where to start? Yeah, Rome's sappers and miners once again. Mm-hmm. So I always try to back up the sources, so I do not want to read any quote. If you have errors, then misquoting anything, wrong context, but you see that I think that is quite obvious. It's in it's in many, 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 many books. Yeah. And so it is very easy when you go into symbolism, who's ruling the world? It is also not a Draco Orion Empire, it is simply this, the Roman Catholic Church. It is the last empire on the feet and the toes of the metal man image, but I think that would be far too much to go into this. But it's a red dragon here. I think we can uh, sum it up. It's a red dragon here. And where is that? Uh, that is in the city of London, which is a mm. corporation, which is the financial headquarters of the world. There are three headquarters. It's a spiritual headquarters is in the Vatican, of course. The financial headquarters is in the city of London Corporation. That's a so-called square mile, although it is not square, but it's so-called a square mile, where everybody, including the screen, officially has to ask for access to the Lord Mayor of the city of London Corporation. So that is a state in a state, or a sovereign in a sovereign state. Empire or the United States of Britain or the United Kingdom would be sovereign, which uh, I highly doubt. But uh, this is the symbol of them, and that is a red dragon. And that's not uh, hard for a Christian who knows the Bible. What ah, that yes, is. Michael, and don't forget the military headquarters of the world. Yeah, in the United States here. Yeah, in Washington, the District of Columbia, and not a part of the United States. That's right. That's right. So that was three? established around 1870, as far mm. as I remember. Yeah, but thanks for reminding me. I would have forgotten that. Uh, but you see, these are sovereign states in a, in a sovereign country. The, the Vatican is a sovereign state in Italy, Yeah, in Rome especially also. Okay, so yeah. you can look up the Organic Act of 1871, and it, it just says in a, in a real simple search here on Google, is an act of Congress that repealed the individual charters of the cities of Washington and Georgetown to er, and established a new territorial government for the whole District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Organic Act is what essentially dissolved 
the states as we knew them into mm. the District of Columbia, which is, of course, like you said, a sovereign state mm. uh, that is not even part of the United States, believe it or not. Mm. So, and yet we believe it is, you know, we're so patriotic, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you, but here in Germany, we, we have, have no, uh, we have no right to be patriotic. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look, you know, there's a lot of things that happened in World War II, uh, and uh, they were very devastating for Germany back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, supposedly, you know, the United States uh, is... Uh, uh, owns germany right or something to that regard but that's mm -hmm. neither here nor there but yeah i think it's always interesting you know to to look back on these things but uh yeah there's a lot of war crimes that are pretty pretty ugly what the states and the brits did in mm -hmm. germany mm -hmm. not very pretty yeah it's the bombing of Dresden and hamburg yep. and all this stuff yes. yep that's right yeah, that maybe that was also a military exercise uh, for Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who knows? Hmm? Mm, well, there's that too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what we had uh, proposed in some yeah. previous sessions yeah. we did. Yeah. 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 Interesting point of view, Michael. That's not far-fetched. Uh, no. So it's very close on the timeline. In Dresden, it was February 1945, and in Hiroshima, it was uh, six months later in August. Huh? So. Mm. It's not that. Uh, yeah, that's always. right. That's yeah. true. That's another. So the, another... So the red dragon always is a depiction of Satan yeah, in the Bible. But who reads the Bible? Huh? Yeah. Book of Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the massacre of Protestants. So Protestants against the Pope. The massacre of Protestants ordered by the Jesuits were called dragonades. Mm. Hmm. And by the way, uh, the now King Charles in, from the United uh, Kingdom uh, is also the or has been the Prince of Wales, and uh, the flag of Wales is a red dragon. Yeah, so you, you you got it everywhere. You got it everywhere. Yeah, it's uh, this world is not so complicated if you really have will open your eyes. Yeah, the flag of Wales. Yeah, it's it's not e it's not hard. To know what a country Wales is or the United King Kingdom or what it's it's not hard. Yeah. Now the problem is that the people do not read the Bible. Well, actually, I, I'm surprised when I look it up. Uh, dragon is mentioned in Nehemiah, Psalms, Isaiah, mm -hmm. and Jeremiah and Ezekiel mm -hmm. in the Old yeah. Covenant. You know, and then in the New Covenant, of course, you have the Book of Revelation mentioned a lot. But yeah. It's uh, it's interesting how you know when you take a take a, a a good hard look at the entire books of the Bible, how the old covenant really comes to reflect a lot of a lot of things that have been omitted in modern teachings. Mm. So yeah, very very interesting to study the Bible, Michael. Yeah, if you see here, Revelation 12, 3, there is a great dragon, and we have talked about that last time. Yeah, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon, and the Bible explicitly tells who the dragon is. That's uh, Revelation 12, verse 9, Brad. Yeah, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was and cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Yeah, so his angels are his followers, if you would speak in terms of Facebook. And and think of this, that uh, when, the, <laughs> <Facebook. laughs> when, the, when the city of London depicts their symbol as uh, the, the dragon or the red dragon, <clears throat> because the red dragon has been mentioned before, some verses before 12.3, <clears throat> Uh, they, they absolutely submit that it is Satan who's ruling the city of London Corporation, which is quite logical because it's the center of financial issues. And we know from Luke 4, 4 that the devil has been giving the authority about any material things in this world. So it's, it's obvious if you compare it with the Bible, you have quite other explanations and they make sense. They make absolutely sense. Yeah. 
The problem is that in China, everything is the other way around. Yeah, so they are worshipping the dragon as the mightiest uh, animal. And uh, so you see, they have, they have black <laughs> dragon fighting society. The supreme societies. grand master, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they mm -hmm. got to throw that in. Where, where, where to start with Matthew 23? Call no one your master. Oh, yeah, Rabbi. that's right. Oh. Man, oh, man. But, you, oh, but man. in martial arts, you are full of them. You got grandmasters and you got supreme master and you got oh, you know, all, the, all the stuff in it. Yeah. So everybody wants to be supreme on top of one. Well, that's, that's in Freemasonry, though. Yeah, also, yes, of course. Yes, it's a hierarchical, <laughs> hierarchical system. Yeah. Right. Right, yeah, so, so they're is, training you. Is, they're they're training you at a young age. Hey, this is how the world is. We have yeah, grand that, masters. Yeah, character here is is absolutely BS. I have forgotten the name, but you you see that you know know that the dragon, the dragon is called the devil and Satan in Christianity, in real Christianity, not in Catholicism. Catholicism, sorry. Yeah, when you see that symbol here, yeah, in a financial district which is depicted as Satan in the Bible, the great red dragon, devil and Satan, then it's quite obvious. So, and then compare that, please, with Bruce Lee, enter the dragon. Yeah, or with return of the dragon, or what else, you see? Yeah, he's been named the dragon. In a Christian way, he's in alliance with Satan. And what he's doing, he's doing martial arts. He's doing the art of war. He's doing the art of a Roman god. He's doing martial arts. And uh, look, when you really are uh, profound in Bruce Lee, how many times he talks about martial arts. He talks about Kung Fu because he's Chinese. He talks not about Kung Fu, but Kung Fu and Kung Fu schools and all the stuff. But he talks about martial arts and he talks about a Roman God. Yeah. And this fight here with uh, <laughs> Chuck Norris, we were going to this, happened in the Colosseum some pictures of it, some frames of it. Uh, also, they have built it uh, in Hong Kong then because uh, that would have taken too long to do it entirely in Rome. And it was also not allowed, but just uh, for the heck of it. Yeah, you see the way of the dragon means the way of Satan, the way of the devil. I know in China, it's all the other way around. And I feel sorry for the Chinese people. Because they have been manipulated. But we know that the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits, uh, they ruled China since 300 years. So that's no wonder that China now is a communist country. Well, you know, and, and you know, for you believers out there, it's really simple. You just go to Colossians 2 verse 8, then you know, you know, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. See, mm -hmm. it's philosophy, it's vain deceit, it's traditions of men, and it's the teachings of the world, not the teachings of Christ. Yeah, that's also the next, also one of the problems that you face because usually Bruce Lee has been seen as uh, as an extreme good philosopher because he has studied philosophy at the University of Washington in Seattle. Yeah, so that uh, the sheer amount of the uh, of his library and of his books that has been displayed is uh, usually creating the um, the impression that he was a highly educated uh, individual. Yeah. For example, but that's an argumentum ad populum, yeah. So that's an that's majority argument, yeah. You see, you can read hundreds of useless books, yeah. You see that he was into phil philosophy, yeah. <laughs> no surprise. No surprise. Sure. No surprise. No surprise. The source. What is theology, Chinese Michael? What is theology? It's a mixture of two lies. It's philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. It's no different. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad to say, but you see that it's always the other way around. And I can and I can uh, even even show that on a on a more simple example. 
yeah, it's it's all about death. Yeah, it's game of death. It's enter the dragon. It's always about beating up and killing people. Bruce Lee is constantly killing people in his movies. It's not about self defense or smart philosophy, solving a crime or a riddle. It's always about death. Always. He kills O'Hara. He kills Han. Jackie Chan has been killed in this uh, movie. Yes, okay, Jackie Chan was a god. <clears throat> yeah, he has been killed in the movie Enter the Dragon. Chuck Norris has been killed in Way of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's always the dragon, the red dragon. The red dragon is the national symbol of Wales. William is the prince of Wales, so his symbol is also the red dragon. There's much to be expected from William because many claim and many uh, think that uh, William, uh, the, the future king of uh, Great Britain, will be the moon child. Uh, he will be elected as the one who's been then uh, governing the one world order. Let's see. But you see this myth mythological um, animal here. And Bruce Lee has been called himself the little dragon. Mm -hmm. Ah, there will be much more in the future. Uh, yeah, Elon Musk is not by coincidence is calling his rocket uh, Dragon, SpaceX Dragon. Yeah, they are all in the same boat, guys mm -hmm. and girls. They're all in the same boat. Beware. Lest any man spoil you with philosophy of vain deceit. This is all vain deceit. Oh, you can go to the stars. You can go to the Mars. You can be a supreme being watching on these losers. Oh, yes. You can be Earth. transhuman, too. Yeah, that's true, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's also very yeah, uh, inter never interesting. Never mind, point. you know, never mind the transvestites, huh? Yeah, you know, also, it, there was a time when people called them transvestites, you know, the people that go around thinking they got a different gender, okay? Mm -hmm. it, it was kind of a shameful name, and now they come up with, what, uh, transgender. Oh, that's so much better, yeah. Clever thinking. And that's also a thing which has to be uh, reckoned with. <clears throat> you see that many, many websites are claiming about Bruce Lee's superhuman strength. And that guy was very um, powerful. <clears throat> I've talked to somebody um, who has been trained with uh, Bruce Lee, and I will later reveal who it is. And he says, yes, uh, uh, he, he could really struck hard. And uh, of course, because he knew physics and, and all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, usually he's been seen with superhuman strength. Yeah. So it's a superhuman. And I would, although it's not my, uh, it's, it's just a regular channel here. Um, of course, he's been seen because this is just happening because that man has is off his balance. Yeah. So it is, of course, also a theatrical act. Not, not taking anything away from his performance or his power, but it has to be spectacular, you see? Mm -hmm. That's 1964, if I remember correctly. So, and the, the thing is that I think that this will also be the future for transhumanism. Um, for example, um, upgrade your own physical body. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to be so fast like Bruce Lee? Don't you want to be strong like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Don't you be so smart as Albert Einstein? And I think that is a path which will lead many people astray in the future, Brad. I agree. It's an it's a way of, uh, you know, synthetically planting information in your brain. I don't think that's too healthy to you. You know, instantly learn a different language? No. Yeah. But that's it. You see that people, people really, they want to achieve something. They really want to want to be uh, something special. Yeah. They really want to be something special. Yeah. And they will sell it to you as an improvement. Okay. For disabled people who are making the choice to have some artificial limp artificial leg artificial hand or whatsoever yeah that's one thing but i think it, more of a broader scale that people really want to have dominion they want to be supreme they want to rule the world arnold schwarzenegger said yeah people need the führer by the way his father was a policeman and his uh, if i if that information is correct his father has been called the terminator 
And you can guess why. It was in the middle of war and uh, the SS and police, they were chasing everybody who was not in line with the government's opinion at that time. Yeah, so, but back to the script. Yeah, we see everywhere dragons. You know, dragon boat races and, and, and dragons are very, very spectacular and very prominent in, uh, in Chinese opera also. Yeah. And uh, to sum it up, uh, as, I, as I said, there is everything 180 degrees in China and then we sum it up for this martial arts session. Although I think that the majority of your dear listeners would have thought about something else that we speak about, but we have to sort out the facts first. It's everything tossed around. Brad, didn't the Jesuits say that white is black and black is white? If the Jesuit general deems it so, yeah. Deems it so, like yeah. And you, you got the same symbolism here. Yeah, usually in karate, so the empty hand, the Japanese uh, uh, form of uh, of Kung Fu, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. It was your superior, not Jesuit general. This is your superior, which yeah. is, of course, a hierarchy. You know. Yeah. Then, then imagine, imagine that um, you have a rank system in the belts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start That's with a white. Right. You start huh. with a white belt. Yeah. And you go with a black belt. Yeah. You go with a black belt. Yeah. But yeah. what what does white and black mean? Oh yeah. well, you have white being um uh, what would it be um ah yeah i forget but purity uh, right religion, okay sure yeah, spirit sure and then black would be submission right yeah black would would be the absence of 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 light actually mm -hmm, yeah? true so right. yeah absence black somebody are not uh, depicting black as a color but um, black is a color, but it's not reflecting the light. Yeah, so it's absorbing the light. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, what that means is uh, it, it, it's the other way around. Uh, first of all, you have to know that in China, everything has been tossed around. So the color of joy is black. Yeah. And the color of mourning, if somebody has deceased or so, is white. Yeah. So it's the absolute opposite to what would be natural. Yeah. So. Uh, usually here in the Western Hemisphere, we dress black when we go to a funeral and not white. And it's the other way around in China. And you see here in a Japanese, uh, Bruce Lee is here uh, in, 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 a, in a black belt because uh, it, it might be uh, true that he was a, a judo black belt because he often used judo also for, for uh, grappling and all that stuff uh, and ground works and so. Um, that means that you are not uh, pure anymore, that you are not innocent anymore, but the black means that you now um, totally absorbed by the system. And oh, I was, of course, I was uh, in, 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 in awe uh, to the black belts uh, when I was in a karate school uh, 40 years ago or so. But uh, oh, that, that's it. The color gets darker, so it absorbs light and you're totally into the system. You, you have mastered the system. Yeah. So the black belt is, uh, is, is then having several under categories, then the first dan, the second dan, and, and et cetera, to the, I think it was the tenth. Um, but actually, it's the other way around. It, it means that uh, now you have served your black belt, uh, but uh, black is uh, in, in all, only in, in uh, some Asian countries, uh, the color of uh, joy, happiness and enlightenment and all that stuff. But uh, here we would depict it as uh, does not reflect any light. And so therefore you are bound. Yeah, this is binding you. This uh, belt is binding you, is, is holding you together in that martial art system. I know that sounds dull, especially for people who are black belts out there and maybe by accident are just uh, switching on here and just joining uh, this uh, strange session of two Christian guys. But uh, think of it. Yeah, Bruce Lee was against any belts uh, officially, but uh, he did uh, wear that uh, uh, judo outfit there. That's also my point. Yeah, everything has been turned around. Yeah, everything has been turned around. If you, if you look to Linda Lee, his, his widow at the funeral, she is completely dressed in white yeah, at a funeral. Yeah, so it's 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 the same thing as dragon. Yeah, they are worshiping the dragon. Yeah. So what do you see? 
Linda Lee hat der Husband's Bruce Lee Funeral in Kowloon. Das ist Hongkong. Except from the dark sunglasses, for obvious reasons. She's dressed in white. And look at the people here, they are dressed in white. So that is really a thing we have to understand that this is a total, complete other system we are talking about here in China and Hong Kong. Of course, you can, I always mix up China with Hong Kong sometimes, yeah, so. But we have to really see what it what it is. You see that uh, it's 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 a strange world, and we have to get used to, to it actually. And uh, I think we have talked about so many points. Yeah, we have talked about so many points. Um, I would like to close it down, but uh, it was very important for me that you really know that martial arts means the Roman god of war. Yeah. So that so many people are depicting themselves as martial artists and uh, absolutely have no reference to uh, the Roman Empire and uh, Sun Tzu and, and all the stuff. And uh, you can uh, start your own research there if Sun Tzu ever existed or if it's just another trick, because uh, since 300 years, also, the Roman Catholic Church and all her servants are ruling the Chinese Empire, and it is by no means a People's Republic of China bread. That's my two cents for today. Um, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your concentration, and especially thanks for Brett for accompanying me. Uh, thanks for bearing with my bad English as usual, and uh, looking forward to the next session. And until that, Maranatha. You have to unmute your mic. Oh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> you know me too well. Oh, yeah, here I am talking to the air, talking to no one. Oh, but anyway, uh, yeah, thank you, Michael, for the session. And I found it very interesting, you know, um, delving into the topic of uh, Bruce Lee, even though I really don't know hardly anything at all about the martial arts or anything of that extent never studied it never looked into it even really and um yeah it's definitely has to do with uh having this uh attitude of uh i gotta go out and hurt someone today you know i gotta go out and uh kick some a so to speak right yeah <laughs> but it's never been my cup of tea. I've always been the musician type of person. Uh, I'm just using that example because I was deep into the research. Oh, for Bruce sure. Lee. And you can combine that with history and China and America and the current situation because you see that all this uh, 2019 thing also happened in China. So I think that you can draw a complete picture. Uh, with uh, many, many, many items in it, uh, many, many subjects uh, to deal with, so that I hope it's uh, interesting also for the people who are maybe not into Bruce Lee, but uh, into history, into China, whatsoever. I hope that we can uh, have uh, many, many interesting issues, because uh, many people suggest that China will be the current world uh, power, but uh, if, if you know that the Roman Catholic Church is already in charge, there is no superpower but the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Well, that's and that's, that's just it, Michael. It's so easy to be led astray today in our... Uh, in the world that we live in is just so enthralled with, you know, you got to have your your ideology, man. You know, well, what ideology, you know? Um, they don't say, no one says it like that, but, you know, that's essentially what we're getting to here is, is there's just all these little different programs going on here to take you away from the biblical truth, Michael. And that's what Michael and I are peering into, well, what is the biblical truth? You know, we're not the 
authors of it here. We are just simply watchmen, you know, willing to do the research, willing to look into the more critical, painful things that we don't hear a lot of so-called Christians talking about, Michael. Mm-hmm. So that's our job. We hope we do a good job at it. And so be it if we don't, uh, at least we try. And that's the point. And uh, yeah, look forward to getting together and on our next sessions to come, God willing. Hope to see you then. Maranatha. Thank you.